You guys won't even believe what just happened. I forgot to hit record. Thanks for watching Coin Table. I'm Chris Tisdale. Today, I'm going to show you guys why you have to take the proofs out of the cello in order to know whether or not it's truly cameo. I did an episode a while back where we opened 100 1962 proof sets. They came straight out of the box. These are the proof sets. I'm going to put a link up here, a little uh, card there that you can click on if you want to go ahead and watch that. We're going to cut them out of the cello and find out exactly what we have going on. Number one, I am not going to wear gloves. Won't do it. Not wearing gloves, guys. Okay? I don't ever wear gloves. And if you do, I would recommend that you stop wearing gloves. Okay? Because you're not going to hurt these coins. Just hold them by the edges. Um, I did try to wear gloves once when I was a brand new guy, and I dropped a lot of coins. So, uh, I can assure you guys that for anyone who's concerned, the graders don't wear gloves. I've never seen an expert or a professional ever. I've never seen a, a professional coin dealer wear gloves. Nobody wears gloves when handling coins, unless you're watching like Antiques Roadshow or something. And, and like that, I just dropped that nickel right on the glass table. Guess what, guys? It didn't do a dang thing to that nickel. Nickel's a pretty, pretty tough metal, so I can promise you right now that that did not hurt that coin, period. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna just cut, I'm gonna take and cut the, cut around them like this. This will kind of be a good way to give you an example of how they look in the cello, like that quarter, for instance, I think this might have a little bit of frost, but you just can't see the cameo through the cello a lot of times, it's just the bottom line. You guys see that frost there? Now, I don't think it's enough necessarily to get the cameo designation, but it is frosty, and so that's nice. And then after I take the, the coins out of the cello, I'm just going to stack them right up on top of each other. And then once I get a full stack, I'm just going to put them in tubes. And that doesn't hurt them either. Ooh, that's a nice one. Money coin. Do three at a time here. For the sake of saving time. All right, I'm gonna have to figure out a better way to do this because this system just isn't, it's just not working all that great. Now, when I say that fingerprints don't hurt the coins, that's only half true because if, if you actually grab like a, a cent, if you grab a penny anywhere but the edges and your, the, finger, the oils from your fingers get on that, that you can pretty much kiss it goodbye. So I'm only talking about the silver coins and the nickels. That one's probably cameo. No. You guys, one thing I learned when I was doing this heavy, heavy is especially with copper and nickel, you've really got to develop your eye. And if you've watched any of my content in the past, please subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Well, actually, I'm being serious about that too. If you, if you do like it, if it helps you, um, help me out by clicking subscribe. But if you watch any of my content in the past, you will, you will hear me say, develop your eye. And the way to do that is simply by looking at coins, period, end. And where I was going with that before I got on that little tangent there was that the only way to develop your eye that I know of is to look at the coins a lot. And so it took me quite a while. It, it took me a surprising amount of time to develop my eye to being able to spot the cameo and the deep cameo with these copper proofs. So make sure that if you are in the coin business, whatever business you're in, hone your craft. Become the expert. If you're going to do it, be the best at it. You know what I'm saying? Tell me in the comments how you feel about that. So we're going to go ahead and open these three. Nothing jumps out at me besides that crazy stunning quarter right there. But let's go ahead and open them up and, and see if there's anything in there that, uh, that looks better once it's out of the cello.
I've tried doing more than three at a time before and I just have yet to find a, a good enough pair of scissors that will do that cleanly. So we just do three at a time usually. And I usually try to go way, way, way faster than this, but I'm trying to show you guys. And so it takes a lot more time. So hopefully you guys enjoy the content. This is the process. This is what I do when I'm trying to make money in coins is I buy the coins and part of that process is going ahead and cutting them right out of the cello and looking at them and grading them and sorting them and so there's one that's pretty frosty and that one I would probably say is at least pushing cameo very close to cameo another frosty so this one here could be cameo I didn't notice that through the cello these quarter in here though, this quarter right here is a banger. Just absolute monster black and white quarters, you guys. Check it out. Mm. The reverse isn't quite what the obverse is, but I would rather have it like that on the obverse than have it like that on the reverse. Oh, they're amazing. Well, that was not good. It wasn't that big of a deal. It's not gonna hurt any of those coins, but it's just kind of annoying. So I'm going to put these piles over here, get them off the towel. The only reason I even have the towel is just so that it's not too, uh, I just don't want the coins clanking on the glass. It's not even because it'll hurt the coins. It's just because it'll sound bad on our ears. Otherwise, just drop them all over the table like this. Out of, out of all these proof sets, I am surprised that we didn't get any monster, at least that I couldn't see anyway. I Usually when you open 100 proof sets, you're going to find, well, that's not true. They come in streaks. Uh, what I was going to say there is, is I'm pretty kind of surprised that we didn't find any um, monster deep cameo proof sets yet. Now my camera's gonna decide that it's gonna have some hard time focusing because it doesn't know what to focus on, this or this or my hands or what. That's a good frosty one. Now you guys, the varieties that you can look for if you're into that type of thing, like myself, um, on these half or on these 1962 proof sets, you can look for the two that I know of off the top of my head are the half dollars that have the D on the reverse bell, and then there is also a double dyed obverse for the 1962 Franklin proof half dollar. So if you're into that type of thing, if you're a variety hunter. Um, another thing I can tell you is the 1962 proof scent. There's a really good double die for that scent. I have found tons of them. I found them years and years ago, and I've got a few set aside. Um, but they're not in any of the cherry picker guides. They're not on any of, the, like NGC or PCGS does not attribute them or recognize them for some reason. I do not know why, because they're really, really good spread. So there's also that, the 1962 proof scent that's a double dyed obverse. Um, you'll definitely find some of those. They're not hard to find, so I'm, I'm certain we have some here. I, I don't think I'll look for them, but if you're into that type of thing and you wanna find that type of thing, feel free to uh, inquire about buying these rolls from me because what I do with all of these is I put them in tubes and I sell them. And that's exactly what's gonna happen here. Come on.
I know that was kind of blurry, you guys. Um, if there was anything super good, I would just make sure that it focused, but there wasn't yet, so. There's a cameo, probably. And then on the, ooh, banger. That's right, man, it's just bringing it back now. Some of these quarters were just, just monster obverse look at that just heavy as heavily it's the deepest frost you'll ever see on any of these proofs it's just ridiculous I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna take all of these out of the cellophane like this and just stack them up and that way I'll come back on with you guys everything will be ready and we can just look at the coins and that way we don't have to waste time cutting all of these things out of the cello so as soon as we're done with these three, that's how it's going to get done. And I think that that's a better way for you guys to spend your time. And I definitely know it's going to work better for me and my camera slash post-producing editing skills. You can call them that. I certainly don't call them that yet. That's been one heck of a journey. Going from a coin nerd to uh, somebody who film and then edits content that's been super fun uh, it's been challenging though and you know who doesn't like a good challenge here and there boom you guys look at that freaking quarter you just won't find them prettier Guaranteed, they just, they don't even come nicer, ever. You can't find them deeper. And I really like coins like that, you know? They really make me happy. Um, on these proofs, I actually will take a look at them with my loop. I'll be looking for the double dyed obverse, and then I'll look at the, the reverse bell for the D. What I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these out of the cello, when, I, when you come back, there's going to be stacks, and then we'll just look at those coins under the light. All right? If somebody knows of a better way to do this, excuse me, if somebody knows of a faster way to do this, put it in the comments. I will send you money. I will literally pay you money for a faster way to do this. I'm being dead serious, guys. There's got to be a faster way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely a deep cameo dime, Rattler. Ah, you guys won't even believe what just happened. I think I just straight up forgot to hit record. We, we looked at every single one of these coins and I forgot to hit record. So, we're not gonna look at every single one of these coins again, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna do my best to try to summarize my process. This is the process of how I make money on proof sets. I buy the proof sets and then I cut them out of the cello and I, I look at them. I look through the proof sets and I find uh, coins that are worth grading. The stars, the cams, the ultra cams. And then I look for varieties, you guys. That's, that's one thing that I'm big on because, well, for a couple of reasons, but mainly because of how large of a role it played for me getting started. You guys, finding varieties in these proof sets, or finding varieties on any coin for that matter, it's free money. Like if you've already got the coin and you're literally just looking at it to see if it's a variety, it's free money when you find it. And if you look for them, you will find them. Trust me. If you don't, you didn't look at enough coins and it doesn't take many. Shh, that's our little secret. I'll tell you everything I know. First of all, the 1962 proof scent, it has a double dot obverse. It's got a really, really good spread. You can see it most in the date there, primarily in the six and the two. And um, it's a super good double dot obverse. I do not understand why none of the graders, I, or I do not understand why none of the grading companies attribute it. 
because it's a super good coin. Like there's a lot of varieties that they do attribute that have nothing on that coin. And I don't understand why one variety gets attributed, but the other one doesn't. I do understand, but we're not going to talk about it right now. And we maybe won't ever talk about it just because it isn't going to do any good. Um, we looked at all the dimes together. Unfortunately, we weren't really together like I thought. And uh, there's some nice dimes, like there's one right there. You know, I'm actually, I, now that I think about it, I don't, I don't know if we did look at all the dimes. My camera has a hard time focusing when there's other coinage here, so um, that'll just be one that we'll look at under light, just to give you an example. Otherwise, we'll put the dimes aside over here. We looked at all the nickels. There's uh, basically with a 1962 nickel, there's one thing I'm looking for and one thing only. And that is the deepest cameoed, nastiest, frosty, ultra cam, deep cam. And if it doesn't have that, it goes in the tube. I don't care if it's cameo or star or deep cameo obverse, but nothing on the reverse. I don't care anymore. Goes right in the tube. Those are all getting sold. They're already sold. It was fast. On these quarters, we looked at a handful of them under light. So we'll do that again. Those are these two piles right here. And then these half dollars we looked at. That right there, guys, that's nasty. So what I do when it has milk spots like that, I just pre-screen and screen those right out of it. Those, those are going to the melt house. They're going to get melted down and hopefully they'll come back as maybe a piece of jewelry or maybe in some sort of a computer hardware. I don't really know or care, but hopefully something where someone can enjoy it a little bit more than in the form of a nasty coin with nasty milk spots because guys, there's nothing you can ever do to get that out. It doesn't go away and it doesn't come out and it's just nasty and it looks nasty and it smells nasty. Ugh. Like it just stinks. I don't even know what it is, but it has kind of a, an ammonia like smell. It's gross. Anyway, um, we looked at a couple of these Franklins under light because I thought maybe some of them would be cameo. Uh, again, for anyone like, oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, it's because I didn't have the camera turned on like I thought I did. I was recording. I mean, I thought I was recording, but I really wasn't. So, which, you know, most of you are probably going to be happy. It was quite a long time. And now we can just cut right to the chase by looking at a handful of these super nice quarters. And I'll explain to you a couple things. So here we go. Let's look at some of these quarters first. Look at that, you guys. Black and white. They're just something about those black and white beauties that I really love. You know? It's kind of um, fascinating because, like, you can see that that one there, it doesn't have the, the same level of frost as that one's kind of disappeared, disappeared. And that one's got it better. But even still, like, if you really just line these coins up and compare them, you could, you'd be able to see which ones were the earliest ones off the die. And you'd be able to see the progression as the frost kind of dies out on you. It's really interesting. Like that one there is heavy. And, and it's got pop. Pops out at you. That one's heavy. It's got some pop. But even still, I, I love them all the same. Even the ones that don't have pop. That one there is great. I don't know if that stuff over there would clean up or not, but that's heavy.
You guys, I'm probably just going to sell these quarters raw, to be honest with you. Um, I don't really want to send them all in and grade them and pay the grading fee on all that. That's one of those situations where one person and one person only is winning, and that's the graders. And as fun as that is for them, I think I'm just going to sell them raw. So if you're interested, hit me up. See if we can make a deal. Because I probably would sell those for a little bit more than the normal price of 90% silver proofs. I mean, I, I could see those selling for like 20 bucks a piece on eBay or something if they're deep cam. I'd probably sell it to you a little bit cheaper though. There's the dime, the one dime I pulled, and it is frosty. Um, here's what I wanted to, to tell you guys. Uh, here's what I wanted to make sure that you took away from this. You guys, this is what it looks like when I'm dealing coins, and it's one of the ways I make money in the coin business. There, there's a lot of ways to make money, and it's one of the reasons I love the coin business, but this is one of them. You buy proof sets, you cut them all out. Um, I go through and I pre-screen, kind of like pre-screen them. So, for example, all those ones with the nasty spots, I, I set those aside. Those are terminal. Those get set upside down. Those are going to melt. Um, all the, the, the pennies, the nickels, and the dimes and the quarters, they get tubed unless it's like super deep cam or something. Now, the half dollars, the half dollars is another story. On those half dollars, I'm going to go through, I'm going to look at them under light, and I'm going to make sure that, it will, that in my opinion, it's going to grade 66 or 67 or better. And on those ones, I'll probably send them to the graders. There's two things I look for on a 1962 half dollar proof besides Cameo. One, a double dyed obverse. Okay, 1962 has a known double dyed obverse, and it's pretty solid pretty solid spread on, on the um, doubling. So I look for those. I've never found one. That's very fascinating because I've pretty much found every single variety out there that I've looked for, except that one's one of them I haven't found. The other thing I'm going to look for on these is I'm going to look for the D. At least they say it's a D. I almost don't even think it is, but the market accepts it to be that. So I'll find it. And if I do, I'll attribute it. And then when I, when that happens, I'll put it on the market and let the market decide and all that good stuff. I've never found one of those either though. So maybe today's the lucky day and maybe I'll find one of those. If I do, you're going to be sure to find out about it because I'll jump back on and let you know. Um, this is a really interesting situation here. This is why it's important to have a grading light because from here in this light, totally looks cameo. Pop it under here like this, poof, cameo is gone. It's monochromatic. So keep that in mind. That's why it's important to have a grading lamp because a lot of coins are like that where they look one way or another in a certain type of light you throw them under the lamp and you're like oh wow that's weird so anyway this has been a different video because of my whatever you want to call it let's call it ADD let's blame it on that that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years of my life so because of my ADD this has been a different video but I appreciate you guys watching nonetheless I'm Chris Tisdale with Cointable. Thank you very much for watching. We are going to see you guys next time.